a lovely sea of wildflowers for this cute hamster to nibble on. I use the same seven colors to achieve different colored flowers. I'm working up one flower just to show you one flower. From here, the colors can be varied to create different colored flowers. So I come in with dark chrome yellow and put down a base layer over this flower. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. Welcome back to my channel. Today are the wildflowers for this European hamster from Fragile World by Kirby Rosanes. I have the color list available in the community tab as well as for free on Coffee or Patreon. This begins in real time, but I have sped it up for the last part because repetition. Now let's get to work on this flower. My next color is orange glaze and I flick in the color from the bottom up to create a nice gradient. My aim for the flowers was a reddish orange flower with light tips. I ended up changing things up and varied the flower colors when I finally realized there were several different shapes. Carrying on, I flicked in light cadmium red from the bottom, again forming a nice gradient with a darker bottom and lighter tips. I add in sepia to help with shading and contrast. This obviously goes at the bottom of the petals, but I also add in a little on the petals that appear to have an overlap. I fill in the tips of the flower with cadmium yellow, which helps fill in the petals and also keeps the tips light in color. I blend in a little more orange glaze, taking it up a little further this time now that I know I can. I blend in light cadmium red to darken the base a little more and work the gradient up a bit. I then add dark red to the base of the petals to darken them up a little more to create the gradient I am looking for and the depth of color. Now that I have one flower done and I know what I want and how best to get it, I go through and batch the next set of flowers. It is after this set that I noticed differences in shape, so I changed the way I worked them up. But for all of them, I begin with a base layer of dark chrome yellow to get me started.
I flick in light chrome red to the bases of all of the flowers. The tiny bud-like flowers are definitely harder to work up. I'm barely flicking at all. I come in with orange glaze next and I take the color out a little further to work the gradient. Again, the tiny buds barely get any color on them. This would have been better with just one color for the tips and another for the base, blending them together. With the dark red, I go through and begin working in the darker shadowed areas at the base and sides of the flowers. I fill in the tips with cadmium yellow and that is the base for the flower.
and refine the color with dark chrome yellow. And for the contrast and shadows, I add in sepia at the base and anywhere that looks to have an overlap. That odd flower splat under the butterfly was a real hard one to figure out. I mostly kept the sepia to the middle with a little in the places that looked like gaps. If this is your first time here, welcome! This video is part of a series. I have the playlist linked above with the first part of the series, but they all stand alone, so grab your pencils and join in right here. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button to stay informed of when the next video in the series is posted. So for the remainder of the flowers, I have sped this part up, but I am also going through and changing up the colors a little to vary the color based on the flower shape. So all of the flowers receive a base layer of dark chrome yellow. From here, the flowers with the long, thin petals all receive a layer with cadmium yellow to create a daisy-like flower. I add in sepia to give a little shading, then I accentuate that with a little cadmium red.
Moving on to the flowers with the rounded leaves, I add in a layer of light cadmium red. I then deepen the color with dark red as I want these flowers to be more on the red side than orange. I add shadows with sepia. For blending out the colors, I use orange glaze. I touch up the color with more dark red to darken, but to also work the shadows a little more. For the flowers with centers showing, I fill the centers in with sepia and bister. I then go through and touch up all the remaining flowers. I then go through and touch up all of the remaining flowers in this section with orange glaze. These would be the flowers that didn't match the first two types. I fill in a mist flower and now I have a lovely field of reddish orange flowers. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me. Let me know below or on social media how your flowers went. I really want to know. If you found this useful, please like and share so others can also find this video. If you want to see more ways to color flowers, I have a video coloring up a water lily. Check that video out here. And until next time, happy coloring!